Welcome to the second part of the You Are What You Eat nutrition series, Have Your Fat and Eat It Too. My name is Julia Wilkins from Health New England and I am a part of the health management team. Today we will be talking about good and bad fats. Let's begin with a statement and see if you think it's true or false. All fats are created equal. Do you think that's true or false? Well, the answer is false. There's actually two types of fats. There are unhealthy fats and healthy fats. So hopefully after this presentation, you'll be able to identify both types of fats and know how to add or remove them from your diet. Good fats help protect you against cardiovascular disease. They can help decrease inflammation within the body and also improve mental health. Let's go into detail about some bad fats. There are two types of bad fats. The first one is trans fat. A lot of times we talk about eating things in moderation, but when it comes to trans fat, these are a type of fat you should avoid at all costs. You do not want them in your diet. A lot of food companies are starting to remove trans fat from their products which is a step in the right direction, but you still want to be aware of trans fats. These types of fats are man-made and completely toxic. There's no nutritional value. They actually increase your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, and it lowers your HDL, which is your good cholesterol. They also increase triglycerides, which are the fattiness in your blood. Dr. Ann's nutrition series, which this webinar is based from, actually refers to trans fat as the food equivalent of tobacco. There's no safe amount for you to consume. Trans fats are mostly found in margarine, shortening, and processed foods, such as baked goods like cookies and cakes, crackers, popcorn, chips, and also fried fast foods. Those who eat trans fats are actually three times more likely to develop heart disease diabetes, or have a stroke. So these should be removed completely. I mentioned some foods you can find trans fat, but how do you know when you go to the grocery store if a food that you want has trans fat in it? Well, you can look at the label. As of 2006, all labels are required to list trans fat. Trans fat can be found under the total fat line item. If any amount other than zero is listed, don't even consider buying it. If zero is listed, also look at the ingredients. Trans fat can be disguised by the words partially hydrogenated oil. Labels are allowed to post that they have zero trans fat when they can really have up to about a half a gram of fat per serving. For example, if you sat down with a bag of chips that had five servings in the bag, with zero grams of trans fat per serving, you actually could be consuming up to two and a half grams of trans fat without them having to post it on the label. So that's why it's important to look at the ingredients. If it says partially hydrogenated oil, it has trans fat. The second type of bad fat are saturated fats. These are fats with fully hydrogenated oil. Saturated fats are known as the four-legged fat because they come from animal products. For example, a saturated fat is red meat, including beef, pork, and lamb. You want to limit this to about two servings or fewer per week. Saturated fat is also found in whole dairy products. So you want to restrict whole dairy products altogether, but you can swap them out for lower fat versions. Just beware of any added sugars. You can look for low fat cheese, a lower fat ice cream, maybe Greek yogurt. And a lot of times people think that when they switch out whole fat for lower fat, they're going to lose nutrients such as calcium and vitamin D. But this is not the case. You will still get all the vitamins from full fat, just with a lower amount of saturated fat. And when you use butter, use it sparingly. Choose where you want to use that butter. Don't cook everything in it. Saturated fat is what clogs our arteries by increasing LDLs. It also increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, abdominal obesity, colon and pancreatic cancer, as well as Alzheimer's. 
So remember, you don't need to cut this out of your diet completely. Just limit what you eat. It's safe to consume saturated fats in moderation. Now let's move on to good fats. One example of a good fat is a monounsaturated fat. These are usually liquid at room temperature. Some examples are extra virgin olive oil, canola oil, avocado, and nuts and seeds. Extra virgin olive oil actually has the highest concentration of monounsaturated fats. It's good for cooking at low temperatures or if you're making something cold like a salad dressing or a, like a pasta salad. If you want to cook something at high temperature, use canola oil. Canola oil has a higher smoke point, so when you're stir frying or sauteing, choose canola oil. Avocados are great because they also have antioxidants, lots of vitamins and minerals, and fiber. They're really versatile, so you can use them in a lot of ways, like replacing your mayo with smashed up avocado, putting some slices in your sandwich, or making a guacamole. Nuts and seeds are great because they also contain protein along with fiber and vitamins and minerals. It's important to remember portion size when it comes to nuts and seeds. A small handful or about one ounce is all you need per day and this can reduce the chance of cardiovascular disease by 35%. Some benefits of monounsaturated fats are that they improve the health of your arteries they can actually boost your metabolism, which we all love to hear. They lower bad cholesterol and triglyceride levels, and they offer some protection against insulin resistance, so they lower the chance of developing type 2 diabetes. The second type of good fats are omega-3 fats, which we've probably heard a lot about omega-3 fats. You want to eat more of these. These are found in oily fish, such as salmon, tuna, mackerel, sardines, herring, and trout, along with walnuts, remember portion control. Omega-3s are found in wheat germ and small leafy greens. When choosing leafy greens, remember that darker is better. The more color in your leafy greens, the more nutrient dense it is. So if you take a head of iceberg lettuce versus a bunch of spinach, which do you think will have more nutrients? The spinach, because it's a darker green. Choose whole soy foods, omega-3 fortified eggs, flax seeds, and also oysters. Omega-3 fats have a lot of powerful nutrients, and it protects against diseases in the two major organs in your body, your brain and your heart. Some other benefits of omega-3 fats are that it reduces the progression of arterial plaque, it can reduce the risk of arrhythmia, which is an irregular heartbeat and sudden death. They lower triglyceride levels, reduce blood clotting tendencies, they lower blood pressure, enhance arterial health, and also reduce inflammation within the arteries. So are you ready to take part in the Great Healthy Fats Challenge? If so, here is your action plan. The first part of the challenge is to eliminate those trans fats Remember, we want to avoid them at all costs. To do this, avoid stick margarine or shortening such as Crisco and foods containing partially hydrogenated oils. Remember to check the ingredients on those food labels. Partially hydrogenated oils are also found in processed foods and fried fast foods. So you might not see the label at a fast food restaurant, but you know that that food has partially hydrogenated oils. If you buy margarine, make sure it's the trans fat Free version. When looking at labels, look for zero grams of trans fat or partially hydrogenated oil. If either of those are listed, don't eat it. And eliminate fried fast foods such as fries or burgers. Choose the grilled option instead. Next, you're going to limit saturated fats. Remember, you can have saturated fats in moderation. Limit your red meat to two servings or fewer per week. And when you limit that red meat, try to consume the leaner cuts such as sirloin or top round. Use that butter sparingly and remember to use trans fat free versions or olive oil instead. When it comes to dairy, choose reduced fat, low fat or non-fat varieties. There are some naturally low fat cheeses that are really high flavored such as Parmesan, feta or goat cheese. And with other cheeses, choose the less fatty cheeses such as part skim 
or reduced fat. Choose Greek style yogurt as a snack or in some recipes you can substitute the sour cream or cream cheese for Greek style yogurt. Limit eating sweets like ice cream to once a week or less and choose that ice cream wisely. Some are much worse than others when it comes to saturated fat. Now you want to add in those good fats. So first add in those monounsaturated fats. Choose those oils like extra virgin olive oil or canola oil and remember which ones to use for high and low temperature. Then consume nuts and seeds slowly. Strive for that small handful per day. This can actually include peanut butter or other nut based butters or sesame paste into your diet. Lastly, enjoy an avocado. If you really like avocados, have one once a day. If you're just trying them out, aim for about once a week. Last part of the challenge is to incorporate omega-3 fats. Eat three or more servings of oily fish per week. Remember those types. Beware how you cook that fish. We don't want to add those trans fats or saturated fats back in. So no deep frying or heavy sauces. You can bake fish or lightly saute or grill, even broil to make them a healthier version. Maybe even add some oil to that fish. Also enjoy walnuts, whole soy foods, ground flaxseed, wheat germ, canola oil, omega-3 eggs, and dark leafy greens for additional omega-3 fats. These can really be in addition to a meal, like putting some ground flaxseed in yogurt or an egg scramble for your breakfast. Eggs are a great omega-3 fat, but if you have diabetes or a cholesterol issue, uh, talk with your doctor and make sure that you can eat them, and if so, probably limit to about once a day. We hope you succeed in this great Healthy Fats Challenge. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at healthydirections at hne.com. Thank you for listening to this webinar and have a great day.